Uh, several agencies are at the scene of the JJ's restaurant explosion as they try to find more answers into why it happened and why more was not done to prevent this explosion that included a number of injuries and one death. Jenna Hanchard is live at the scene with more on this. Good morning, Jenna. Yeah, we needed that spring like weather. So Brett behind you, they're going to show the game right there in the big monitor. Is that right? You betcha. That's yeah, great. I see myself right now in a little delay, but that's pretty cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> and have you heard anything about tickets? Or are they still available? Well, I'm not sure about tickets from the box office. I've heard a lot of folks say at the event sort of uh, purchase, if you will, without saying the scalping. I got you. I got you. <laughs> we got what you're saying. All right. In so many words. Exactly. Uh, Brett, thank you for that. And here's a look All at right. the game schedule for day two of the Big 12 tournament. Oh, welcome back, everyone. Happening right now, multiple passengers aboard another Carnival cruise ship are telling stories of power outages, overflowing toilets, elevators not working. And this is the cruise ship. It's actually called the Dream. Police in upstate New York killed the gunman early this morning after storming his hideout. The tense moments were caught on tape Wednesday when a gunman shot and killed four people and injured two others. The TSA chief will testify before a House committee today on its decision to allow small knives back on planes. Do you remember the phrase 47%? It played a big role in the presidential election. Now the man who recorded Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney when he uttered that phrase in a Florida home last May is finally speaking out. Yes, you know, I, I've been in the community now for three years and I got to say, you really see even at an early age here in Kansas City in the metro, the children start young when it comes to having a team that they're going to root for. I'm telling you, you know, my 11-year-old doesn't have an allegiance to, but I mean, he's he's a KU fan, and my 8-year-old, uh, K-State, so I've got a house divided already. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Brett. We'll check back All with right. you soon. We have some new information this midday on the Newtown School Massacre, what Adam Lanza researched before carrying out the tragic shootings. Right now, several agencies are at the scene of the JJ's restaurant deadly explosion as they try to find more answers into why it happened and in particular, too, why more wasn't done to prevent it. Jenna Hatcher is live at the scene with more on this. Jenna. A Pennsylvania man accused of trying to bring fake explosives through KCI is back in court this morning. Federal prosecutors are seeking permission to forcibly medicate Anthony Falco Jr. Gladstone police have arrested a woman who they say shot her husband's girlfriend multiple times while two children were in the house. Officers say Diana Barnes and her husband were talking when the woman, the girlfriend, came over to grab a few things from the house. They say Barnes got angry and fired several shots at the girlfriend. A 14 and 10 year old child, they were at the home at the time. Barnes is charged with assault. Starting today, Kansas City Police and the Missouri Highway Patrol are stepping up DUI patrols with all the activities this weekend, including St. Patrick's Day. They want to remind you to plan ahead if you're out drinking. Do not drive. UMKC offering STD tests on campus after a new study showed shocking new numbers in Missouri. All new this midday, those close to the Newtown school shooting say that the gunmen showed interest in other mass shootings. A Brazilian doctor and her colleagues got creative in how they check into work while they're not really there. The woman was caught on video using fake fingers. Take a look at this video if you can. These fingers, they're fake, they're made of silicone and imprinted with real fingerprints to defraud a hospital's punch-in clock. Many of us can go back to our childhood and remember competing in a spelling bee. But what if we told you that it wasn't the kid who couldn't spell the word? said it was the folks running the competition. Eric Rosales reports. We'll know how to spell it. <laughs> oh, that's great. What a confident young girl. And, and to imagine, you know, someone with a, a big title like word master, and she was still right. Doesn't matter how big your title is. Well, so come March 21st, Sierra and two others from Selma will represent the district in the 2013 Fresno County Spelling Bee. And by the way, Sierra's mom was also a competitor in her county Spelling Bee. So apparently it runs in the family. All right, Brett, so spell tournaments. Because it's going right, on right Curtis. now. Been real quick uh, this evening, also. All right, Brett, thank you for that. We appreciate it, Absolutely. man. Have fun out there. A young Texas woman is coming to terms with the harsh reality. She's losing the ability to walk, and she's making sure that people know about her rare disease. Andres Gutierrez shares her story.
Ready? And up. This week, the Missouri Senate is expected to vote on a bill requiring a test for heart defects in newborns. The bill is called Chloe's Law, named for a Lee Summit girl who was born with heart defects, as she was screened only after her mother insisted that she be tested. All right, Brett, so you've been out there now for the last two days. Uh, what a great time you're having, and it looks like it's going to be uh, a great game because, what, is it KU or K-State starts in a couple hours? KU plays Texas Tech at 2 p.m. Curtis, I just looked up, it's about